There he is. Can we save it? How are you? Good What's to up? see you. What's up, Chad? How you doing, baby? Kid from Akron. 17 years. No way. <laughs> Woohoo! Right, Hold right. on, Allie, Allie wants to jump uh, in. I, she's, yeah, I don't she's, want you to get too comfortable yet. She's chomping. Because I can't believe... Posture, well Posture, done. Always. You got yep, it. Always. Um, I can't believe you just went through that entire press conference and no one brought the heat as you brought with your kick game today. Can you can you show? Can you, can you show can you us, get please? Where the camera? Where the camera? Yeah, yeah, so you gotta, we gotta, we gotta, can you see? I those? mean, these, you see those? There it is. Oh, these are yeah. some. Today is Friday, so like a little flashback. Flashback yeah, Friday. A little flashback Friday. LeBron seven. Why? Why right. the seven? That's nice. The seventeen. That's year seventeen. Nice. So we're gonna, nice. you know, you always have seven. Something. You know. Laker colorway, Method to your know, Laker faithful. I'm happy to be back. One this purple, is... one go. I like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, do a little something. It's unique. So <laughs> you're welcome. Le LeBron had this whole thing to start with, the off season. But then we just yeah. showed this graphic, and I know you're a historian of the game, yeah. and Big Game James loves that. Fourth all time leading score. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's crazy, yeah, right? It is crazy. <laughs> I mean, especially for you know someone who can care less about scoring. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it's not my my primary thing that I like to do and you know, I'm more of a guy who like to see my teammates shine get them involved in the game um, but I've been put in positions where my team needed scoring so that's why I'm able to I guess sit at fourth right now <laughs> it's nice yeah, that's crazy it's nice it's crazy. And, and LeBron I know you were asked this earlier uh, by the rest of the media but it is crazy to think I think the last time you were done by April 9th you were 20 yeah I was 20 my years second old year, yeah. you said you didn't miss one playoff game we thought that was awesome yeah. we discussed it but what was it like for you mentally and physically I mean it's, it was first of all the beginning of the summer was very challenging because mm -hmm. uh, I just haven't <laughs> like you said you just said it, I haven't been <laughs> off that long uh, since my second year in the league when I was 20 years old so it was challenging but once I settled in it was like okay there's always some good to what other people think is bad. So the great thing about it is the first time I also got an opportunity to rest my body. You know, I haven't had that much rest for my body to kind of reset everything, kind of strip down the car and, and actually rebuild it back up uh, for the long haul. So um, I was very excited about that. Um, and also it's been a long time since I actually got an opportunity to spend that much time with my family as well, you know, because, you know, between you know, the going to the finals multiple years over and over and over as big game would attest to. And then you add on the Olympics as well. I played in three mm -hmm. Olympics along that timeline as well. Um, so it was pretty cool. So many Taco Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> shout, shout out to the Dodgers, by Did you the see way. the Dodgers? Did you see the Dodgers? Yeah, they hit me, by with, the way. A, they hit me with a Taco Tuesday on a Thursday. I was like, you know what? It's the Dodgers. Yeah, yeah, go right, guys. Legit yeah. costume. Yeah, the legit costume. Awesome. Awesome. That was awesome. Uh, for you, LeBron, I know you've always said you don't need any extra motivation. Uh, but, but I got some this summer. We're not. We're not on talk oh. mode, though. Oh. But I'm not a talk mode. My mom told me. I wish no, no, I could no. elaborate a little when bit more. When you're on oh. this desk, you're My in mom talk told mode. me she was like, listen, don't talk about it, be about it. But I, I, there's some motivation for me. There was a lot of it's a lot of conversations going on this summer, and and I just I was just very quiet, very quiet, and I am going to maintain quiet. But I am I am very motivated. But you also shot a movie. Yes. But you also were in the gym at the yeah. crack of dawn. Yes. How were you able to balance it all? Um, sometimes I ask myself, how, how do you do it? Um, how am I able to balance shooting a movie for three months, uh, 12, 14 hours a day on set? Um, but I know what the main thing, the main thing never changes for me. And that's mm -hmm. putting in the time and putting in my commitment to the game of basketball. No matter what I'm doing, no matter if I'm you know, on shows or I'm creating shows or, or I'm shooting a movie as I did with Space Jam, the main thing continues to remain the same thing, and that is how I can get better with the game of basketball and be better for my teammates when I show back up for training camp. I remember uh, after playing in the playoffs up until May and June, I remember not making the playoffs that year. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell is going <laughs> on? You, you don't know what to do with yourself. Right, you don't. You don't. You're, you're frustrated the first yep. couple of weeks. You yep. know, you start working out too early or, right. or you're trying to work too hard. What was the one thing, though, that, that you reflected back on that you can bring to this season that's gonna that's gonna help you, you know, because you you've been a leader your, every year. Yeah. You had so much to to take on. What was the one thing you reflected on this year? Um, I think the one thing that I reflected on um, was I kind of early on I wanted to kind of see what was going to happen last year, you know, because I knew we were very young, we were very young with our team last year. So I wanted to kind of see what was going to happen with our team instead of come in and kind of you know giving my voice a little bit more. Um, you know, being more more vocal 
um, you know, because I wanted to allow the young guys to kind of learn. And, and I, would knew, I knew that at some point throughout the season, they would have to kind of figure out on, them all, on their own as well. So I wanted to kind of see that early on. And it was different for me. I, I've kind of never done that over the last, I would say, you know, 14 years. I've always come in and kind of just got right to it, you know, especially vocally. Um, but now it kind of changes. But at the same time, we have a veteran ball club now. Mm -hmm. It's a totally different <laughs> team now. We have a veteran ball club where I could, I can now pick and choose when I want to be uh, more vocal because now we have AD who's very vocal as well that people don't know about. He's a great leader. You know, Rondo is in his second year mm -hmm. with the team who's uh, was huge. Jared Dudley is very vocal that people don't know about it. Uh, well, I would call him Jared Dudley, but yeah, we, I, I, we call him Duds yeah. on the team. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got, we got nicknames. He's going to be very valuable to this very set. Valuable, yeah. Very valuable, very <laughs> valuable. So, uh, yeah, to this set and all, to this court right here. Uh, you know, so, um, you know, I, I'm just looking forward to everything. You know, I, I reflected on a lot as far as on the court, uh, off the court, how I can be better. Um, you know, it's not the season that I wanted um, any of the Laker faithful to remember me by um, in my first year. So um, I'm e extra motivated by that um, in his own sense. LeBron, AD is no longer on the way. Anthony Davis is a Laker, and, and that's uh, got AD a real on, nice. He is not on the way, <laughs> yeah, he is here. That He's is a real heat. nice uh, <laughs> ring to it. Uh, we've talked about it all summer long, just what, how your games complement each other. I want to hear it from you. How do you envision this partnership on and off the court? Because well, you're first, good friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. First of all, off the court is is, is just super, super duper easy, mm -hmm. because we just we would have mutual respect for each other for so long. Um, you know, I, I've known his him and his family for quite a long time now. Um, he was at my he's actually at my basketball camp when he was in high school. Crazy. Wow. When I used to have my basketball camp back in my hometown of Akron, Ohio. Um, so I, I've known him all the way from back then, and then just watching him from afar and seeing the things that he's been able to accomplish. Um, even still at such a young age this kid is 26 years old mm -hmm. uh, he's 26 years old and he prime. is uh, yeah he's in i remember when i was 26 as well <laughs> he is in the prime of his game and i think i'm just i'm, I'm so excited to be out there with him it's gonna we're gonna we just compliment each other so well because we're two selfless guys one it's all about the team and we're two uh two guys that care so much about our teammates being successful and, and that's what it all boils down to uh, all about the team, but when it comes to AD, he's already, I think, set a standard and a bar in terms of when he said he wants to be the Defensive Player of the Year, but also wants to hold you to that standard as well. What went through your mind? Oh, let's do it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know me, Al. I mean, I love a challenge. Yep. I love a challenge, and, and for AD to set that standard, like everyone's talking like how great the Lakers can be offensively and, and the combined points per game from AD and LeBron and what they can accomplish. And then you have AD say, I want to be the defensive player of the year. Alongside a guy who's been a defensive player of the year and Dwight Howard, a guy mm -hmm. that JaVale McGee, who's a defensive guy, Avery Bradley, who's a defensive guy, KCP, Danny Green, Danny Green, Danny Green first team all defense last year. Okay, so Do you I, have I it love in you? that. At this I point of that. your career? I got whatever is needed for the team <laughs> at this point in my career. You tell me what's needed to be done, I can get you it hear done. that? <laughs> Tweet that out. Okay. By the way, we got to let him go, man. It's never go. long enough, ah. big game. Go, Unless man. you have one more. I mean, I'm, no, I, no man, one's going to yell no. at you. Big game, yeah. you ain't got no time. Bill, Bill time is hey, money. Hey, you're my guy, yeah, Go man. get that paper, hey. baby. Yes, sir, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, we got to go to Mike Bresnan. Just kidding. He's with Quinn Cook. What was the offseason like for you personally? Because it had been a long time since you had missed the playoffs. And I remember hearing someone like Chris Bosh say, one of your former teammates say, when you come back this year, you will come back with a vengeance. <laughs> um, it was a great summer for me. Um, got an opportunity to um, you know, spend a lot of time with my family, my friends. Um, shot, a, shot a movie, Space Jam, that I'm uh, uh, truly excited about and, and, and will be great. Um, and also got an opportunity to put in a lot of work on my game. Uh, so, um, and take care of my body, be able to refresh my body, reset my body. Um, so it was, a, it was a great summer for me. It was long, um, something I haven't been accustomed to over the last past uh, previous years. But, um, you know, you, you take each day and uh, I enjoyed each day that I had. LeBron, I think the longest summer since 2005, and you had been in a rhythm probably going to the finals and, and getting ready for a certain date. How does that impact your training in the offseason, and, and how do you feel physically just with that switch and how long it's been? Um, I don't think it, it impacted my training at all because I train all year round pretty much. Obviously, I take a little bit of time after the season from basketball just you know, because we do so much pounding and bumping and grinding on, on, on the hardwood over there. But as far as training, I train all year round. You know, so um, in, in that instance, 
Um, it, it didn't change much. Obviously, I ramped it up a lot more over the last couple months. Um, you know, from you know late you know April, the difference between late April and you know August and September was obviously the training sessions and, and the regiment was a little bit different as far as ramping it up, as far as intensity. But as far as me just training, I did that all summer. LeBron, uh, we've been kind of talking about this, but you've never really quite had a summer like this, given everything that happened uh, where you are in your career and as long as you were off. I mean, you had to sit and watch a playoffs and a finals. You haven't played basketball since, I think, April. Mentally, where are you? How, how did you come through this? Was it a clarifying moment? And did it refocus you? Just where, where are you in that regard? <laughs> Uh, you made it sound so bad, like sitting and watching basketball is such a bad thing. I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I think you guys seen some of my Instagram posts when I was actually showing you guys me watching the playoffs. I didn't miss one game, by the way, throughout the whole postseason. Not one. I watched every single last one of them. Even when I was on vacation, um, I watched them. Uh, from a competitive side, uh, standpoint, obviously you want to be out there, and I wanted to be out there with me and my teammates, um, but we didn't make it. So um, you, know, you, you take that as it is. Um, but for me, I'm just trying to refocus myself, refocus my mind and my body and, uh, you know, prepare myself throughout the summer on, you know, what I wanted to do and me individually, how I'm going to be a better player, a better leader this year and uh, be as great as I can be to help this franchise do ultimately what it wants to do. And that's to, to be a better uh, franchise on the floor. We want to be able to compete every single night. And obviously we know what the long term goal is, but it's all about the process of today. Um, I was just wondering, it was such a long process for this team to finally acquire Anthony Davis. Uh, when that happened, what were you doing and how exciting was it for you that it was finally done? Um, what was I doing? I do not remember exactly what I was doing, um, but I can tell you that I was ecstatic. Um, very excited. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I know the caliber of player AD is. Um, not only from a basketball standpoint, but also from a leadership standpoint and what he can bring to any franchise. And, uh, uh, you know, when Rob and everyone in the upstairs, um, you know, did what they had to do to acquire uh, a talent and a person um, uh, as AD, um, I was, I mean, obviously uh, truly excited. You guys probably seen how much time we spent together in the summertime. So um, obviously that spoke for itself. But um, it's exciting to have such a, a, a beautiful young mind um, a, a beautiful player, um, but also a great leader as well, you know, and, and um, I, don't, I don't think he gets a lot of credit for that, uh, being a leader that he is as well. So it's, it's, I think it's a great opportunity for this franchise to have such a, a you know, a, just an all around, uh, you know, all around person. Um, I think the basketball will speak for itself, but just an all around great person. LeBron. Um, what has been your approach to the, you, what, the way you think your team should start a season and what will it be this year, especially in the West being so tough? I think our approach is how we approach every day. Uh, we have to try to maximize each and every day. Um, and it starts with, you know, you know, tomorrow, you know, our first day of practice, uh, first day of training camp on how we get better. You know, it's going to be a process for us. We ultimately know what, 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 what our goal wants to become, but you can't shortcut the process. And if we come in every day, uh, learn from our coaching staff, um, learn from each other, get to know one another. We have a new team. Uh, we have a few returning guys, um, but we have a lot of guys that wasn't part of the team last year. So, um, you know, chemistry and camaraderie and togetherness and, and how we can become a, a how fast we can become a team um, by not shortcutting the process is what it's going to be all about. LeBron, to your left, AD, AD told me that um, – you, you spoke to Lakers management and everybody about how you think it's important to kind of go through him. Uh, two questions. Have you ever done that before for another player, and why do you think um, it's important for you to do that now? Uh, yes, I have, um, actually. Um, you know, first couple years in Cleveland, when I returned for the second time, you know, I wanted to, the offense to go through Kyrie. Um, I just seen the, the, the talent, the level of talent that he had, and um, I wanted him to be able to run the show, um, be able to put us in position, um, you know, having the, the basketball skills that Kyrie had. And I mean, I, if you can go through back to some of my transcripts, I was talking like I believe that, you know, someday he could you know, potentially be an MVP in our league. I just seen how talented he was. And um, so, yes, I've done that before. And um, in order for us, uh, we, we don't know 
exactly what our um, offensive things that we're going to do defensively we're going to do uh, we haven't got started yet like I said we got a brand new coaching staff we have brand new players uh, coming into all to a new system but we do know we all know how great Anthony Davis is and if we're not playing through Anthony Davis um, while he's on the floor then um, <laughs> it makes no sense to have him on the floor because he's that great and and it doesn't mean like every time down you know you know we, we throw it to him and throw it to him and throw it to him but we have the ability to do that, and um, he's been very efficient in his career. Um, he commands double teams, and when you're able to attract two, uh, you know, defenders on one guy, then you have the numbers game. Now you got a four on three on the backside, so it opens up for you know for other guys on the floor, including myself. LeBron, you, over to your right, back here. You talked to a lot of people around the league this summer, and there's excitement because there's no clear-cut favorite for the first time in a, in a long time. Uh, can you recall a time in your career where it felt like this going into the year, and how do you view you know, the, the competitors, the contenders around the league? Uh, I'm not sure, Dave. I, I don't know how to kind of uh, say how I feel or how I've seen. I, I don't know. Um, you know. For me, I think it's great what, what the league uh, has been able to do year after year after year. Uh, we continue to be the, the greatest sport in the world. Um, and we put out uh, the best product on the floor every night to be competitive um, and, and, and play to not only our abilities, but also uh, showcase talent that our fans love, uh, play with a lot of passion. Uh, so in that aspect, I think it's great. Um, I think our, our, our league is in a great position right now. Adam Silver has done an unbelievable job, um, and, and every team um, has tried to um, you know, just continue to get better and better and better to help the league out um, ultimately. As far as me and as far as how I feel, you know, my only goal is how I, I can prepare myself every day to help this team be as great as we can be and, and not shortcut the process. Um, that's always been my, my goal every single year um, and how um, AD and myself can lead these guys um, and put them in position to be successful every night, um, not only from a game aspect, but from a practice aspect as well, uh, will ultimately be um, you know, what we want to accomplish. Uh, LeBron, uh, both the Lakers and Clippers made moves to become title contenders this summer, and uh, people here are really excited. What do you think LA is going to be like between the Lakers and Clippers? And you guys were one of the teams that were in on Kawhi. What was your reaction? What was your reaction when Kawhi and Paul George went to the Clippers? Um, well, I think it's um, you know it's great for you know everyone talking about uh, the big winners of the summertime. Um, is it the the Nets? Is it the Clippers? Is it the Lakers? Um, it's actually Staples Center. Staples Center is the biggest winner of the summer. You know, you, if you're a fan of the game of basketball, you get an opportunity to see the Clippers one night, and then you get an opportunity to see the Lakers. And then you got great shows and great performers and artists and everybody who come through Staples Center all throughout the year. Uh, Staples Center is a, is a place to be. Um, maybe even Sierra Canyon can go there and play a game. Just throwing that out there. They have some some freshman on their team that's doing okay for himself as well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, um, I think it's just great. I mean, the, the city of Los Angeles should be very proud of what's going on, not only with the Lakers and the Clippers, but also with the Rams and the Dodgers and the Kings and, and USC and UCLA and so on and so on. If I missed you, um, um, you know, I apologize. But it's just it's a great time uh, to be a sports fan in the city. LeBron, do you take here? Do you take any right here? Sorry, we, oh, okay. do you take any extra motivation after all that the team went through last year? And do you still feel like you have something to prove or show to the LA Laker fans? Um, I'm very motivated, um, but I, I'm right now not in talking about it mode. I've been very quiet this summer for a reason, and uh, my mother always told me, uh, "Don't talk about it, be about it." Man, so that's where I'm at. Um, I think as a team um, and myself, um, we need to get the Lakers back to what they've been accustomed to over years. So I'm excited about that. LeBron, you talk about the relationship with, with, with AD, and it seems like it's a pretty, there's a pretty deep bond there. But you know he's a free agent at the end of this year. Does, does that pending decision, um, has that influenced the way you are thinking about that relationship and going into this season to make sure that he wants to stay here long term? No, of course not. Um, for me, um, if you know me, um, there's a couple people that know me. I, I'm a guy who lives right now. I live in the present. And, uh, you know, what's happened in the past is nothing you can do about that. And you can't, you have no idea what the future holds. You know, so, you know, if you start to think about the future, um, then you will miss out on a great opportunity that might be right, right in front of your face. And, um, and I think that's even more selfish. 
So for me, um, having AD here right now and having this ball club here, we're, we're not even going to address that throughout the season. And I bet um, AD will, will talk about it. Um, but our, our goal is to get better every day. Um, you know, Coach Vogel and the coaching staff is going to put us in the, in the best possible chance for us to win every night. And, and that's what it's all about. Hi, Lebron. Yeah. Are you planning on play for the Team USA next season, so, next next year? Are you, are you planning on play for the Team USA oh, next for Team year? USA? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would love to. Um, you know, I have to. I would like to. I want to stay healthy as well. That's most important. Um, you know, I was not um, um, not happy about you know how we did this summer. Um, I think we're all a brotherhood, and I know the guys that was there, they played um, you know, extremely hard. They played extremely well together. Um, they just fell a little bit shorter than we, what our uh, expectations are, and, and I applaud those guys. I didn't say anything, obviously, while they were, while they were playing, but I applaud every everyone uh, individual that was on that team this summer, including the coaching staff and everybody, but um, it's not what we are accustomed to. Um, so, um, you know, see how I can do it throughout this season, and um, you know, and I will, um, you know, address that at some point. Um, you know, hopefully have an opp opportunity to have a conversation with Coach Pop and see what his direction is. Um, you know, going forward with 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 Team USA. But I will always uh, uh, bleed red, white, and blue. That's for sure. Last question. LeBron to your right. Um, Rob has talked about a lot how he conferenced with you and AD while the roster was being built. What was that process like, and how has that has, has that affected your relationship or? Close into your relationship with Rob? Um, I think uh, it's not about what, you know, first of all, I think, you know, Rob and, and Kurt and, and Linda and Jeannie and everybody in the upstairs did a hell of a job this summer. Um, you know, from acquiring AD, um, you know, to, to acquiring everyone um, that is a part of this team, to bringing back the guys that were free agents last year, bringing them back to the roster. Um, they did a hell of a job. And, and um, you know, bringing in the coaching staff, handpicking the coaching staff as they did. Um, so, you know, throughout all the, um, throughout all the, the word that I want to use is not for, the, throughout all the bull that was narrated for our franchise, um, and, and narrated and 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 going towards Rob and and, and the beautiful people that we have upstairs, um, they just kept their their blinders on and. and and just focus on what they had to do to, to help this franchise be as competitive as they can be. Um, and they did exactly that and, he, and, and also even exceeded that. So, so you know, I think they did a hell of a job and, you know, I'm happy to be a Laker. Appreciate it. Can you, um, yeah, can you talk about the excitement you have now that it's time to go into training camp when there's so many high expectations? And also, I'd like for you to talk about what LeBron said when he talked about how everything should go through you to make you feel so much more important oh, on this that? team. Yeah. Um, I'm excited just to get started. Um, can't wait till tomorrow, you know, to be around these guys and knowing that we are going to be a, um, a step closer, you know, to, to tipping it off for real. So uh, I'm excited about that opportunity, you know, um, to work with his coaching staff, um, to be here. Um, and then for what LeBron said, um, it was very, very kind of him. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, I think feed off each other tremendously. Um, you know, I think we're two guys who are very selfless and just want to win. Um, and when you have two guys like that, it makes both of our jobs a lot easier. Uh, and then we also have other guys around us who, who also, you know, wants to win and going to help us along the way. Hey, Anthony, focusing on the offensive end, uh, just considering LeBron and the attention that he draws defensively, what do you think that can do for your game that you haven't had in the past, just with the, you being the primary focus most times of the defense? Um, I think it opens up the floor. It opens up opportunity for um, other guys. You know, he's always been a guy that commanded double teams, um, and he's also a great passer at a, at a double team. So I think, you know, by him, you know, commanding double teams, and uh, it, will, it will open up my game up a lot, um, a lot of one-on-ones and uh, single coverage uh, defenses, and um, also being able to, you know, 
swing it to the next guy who who might be open as well. So I think it put the defense in the bond uh, when you have two guys who you have to worry about um, every time down the floor. Uh, AD of uh, Ray ahead. Um, what what was your reaction when you heard about Demarcus's <clears throat> injury and and what? Um, what have been your interactions with Dwight uh, and, since he's uh, been able to come aboard? Um, I was I was shocked uh, just knowing that he worked so hard to try to get back uh, from his ACL. I mean, <laughs> his uh, quad and his uh, Achilles. Um, you know, he hasn't you know really had the opportunity to you know be old Demarcus, and um, he wanted this year to be the year um, because he felt like he was very healthy. Um, and then, you know, the ACL happened. So um, he's in good spirits. He's happy to just to be here still and um, be around the team. Um, and we support him, you know, all the way through. Um, and, you know, me and Dwight, uh, very cool. Um, you know, he's been here uh, since he signed here, you know, working out. And uh, we've been, you know, working out together as well um, alongside, you know, JaVale. So just trying to, um, you know, get acclimated with each other, um, knowing that, you know, a lot of times two of us are probably on the floor together. So um, just trying to, you know, build that team chemistry. Uh, Anthony, uh, media days are always kind of weird. I'm going to guess, though, that this is a slightly different experience than what you had in New Orleans. But when this is over, it's going to continue. I mean, all these people are very interested in the Lakers and the Clippers. So what do you think that this experience will be like for you going forward? How, how do you think it'll be different than maybe what you experienced in uh, New Orleans? Um, definitely, like a lot more people here. <laughs> uh, but I mean, media day is media day. Um, you know, you know, everyone wants to get a story. Um, everyone wants to talk to the players, take pictures, and stuff like that. So, um, it just doesn't phase me. Um, what I'm interested in is, you know, um, the stuff we do on the floor. Um, obviously, the bigger city, uh, bigger media coverage, but, um, you know, I, I knew that you know when I got traded here, so I'm prepared for that, and um, I think um, it's going to be a fun year. Hey, Anthony, just to your right, over here. I think hey, all good. That's all good. Um, so the Lakers have a, a storied history of big men who have done great things on the court, but have also become stars. I guess really in movies and TV as well. You think of Wilt, Kareem, Shaq; those guys have all won championships and also become movie stars as a result. How do you sort of see yourself? within that context, given your success in the NBA so far, what you want to do with the Lakers and now being in Space Jam? Nah, that was a one-time thing, brother. <laughs> I don't see, that was a lot of, that was very time-consuming. At least right now, I don't see any more movies you know, <laughs> in my uh, near future. Um, but it was a fun experience, you know, um, to be able to um, star, well, I won't say star, but um, being a movie, you know, that I that I grew up uh, watching in my childhood. So uh, to be, you know, Space Jam 2 with other um, other players as well, I think is a big honor for me and um, something that I I can always, you know, hold on to forever. AD, to your right, this is obviously an iconic franchise with a national brand. How do you keep your world small so you guys can grow as a team and accomplish some of the high expectations that come along with this? Uh, I think just knowing that, um, nobody um, outside of the locker rooms matter. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, stuff people say. going to be a lot of narrative that you know people try to tag on the Lakers. But uh, we have to make sure that you know, with all that being said, we have to uh, stay um, close as a unit, um, from the player to the coaching staff, front office. It has to be just about the Lakers organization, um, and that's it. And if we're able to do that, then a lot of stuff that gets put out in the media or um, try to portray the Lakers to be something um, or try to portray a player to be something that they're not, uh, we can overcome that. Uh, Anthony, to your right a little bit. To your right over here. Uh, has LeBron spoken to you at all about, you know, what it's like to play under the spotlight that comes with playing on one of his teams, the pressure? Is that something that you guys would talk about or, or not something you would address? Uh, no, not something that he um, told me anything, but, I mean, you see it. I mean, anytime you play in under, you know, big lights, night in and night out, or someone's, you know, not someone, but everybody's watching you night in and night out. Um, like I said, you're going to hit obstacles. Um, you're going to have adversity. You're going to have a narrative around you. Um, but it's about how you overcome that. And I think we have a team that's, that's you know, very tight. 
um, where we can lean on each other um, and just put all that behind us. AD, right here to your left, yes. Hi. Um, I know that you kind of make it a point to forge strong relationships, uh, whether it was with Drew and Ja, you know, working out over the summer. Um, what was that kind of juxtaposition, you know, working out with them and then forging this new relationship with your new team and how, what kind of things did you glean from kind of balancing those relationships? Um, those relationships extend way more than basketball. Um, been knowing Ja since I was in high school. You know, he's from Chicago as well and been knowing Drew for a while, um, you know, in New Orleans. But those those friendships and those relationships extend off the court as well. So um, it was an easy transition and we still talk, you know. Um, and then, you know, also bringing, you know, coming here and having building new relationships with the guys here. So um, all the relationships I have extend more than just, you know, on the court. So um, it makes my life a lot easier. Hey, Anthony, um, I wanted to ask about the players camp that you guys had. Um, what was the energy like and and what was LeBron like? What kind of what roles did each of you take um, during those few days? Um, it was fun. I mean, we uh, had some great workouts, um, just trying to build some team chemistry um, before going to training camp. Um, it's the first time we had everyone, excuse me, everyone together. Right. <laughs> it was the first time we had uh, everyone together, um, so that that was pretty cool and um, enjoyed each other's company and just you know just have one last who robbed before you know training camp starts. So um, like I said we got we got some work in. Enjoy Vegas and now you know ready to get started. AD, uh, can you describe what your role was um, during the offseason, assisting the front office and helping to recruit players, conversations you had with others, and the vision that you gave guys as, uh, as they were seeking to join you guys uh, with the Lakers? Um, I think uh, the front office did a great job of including you know, LeBron and myself and um, the decisions you know, to, to build this team. Um, you know, every guy that is on his team, um, you know, me and LeBron had to say so. And, and I think that's very important, you know, when, you know, you go on to war with guys every day. Um, it'd be pretty weird to go with a guy, go to war with a guy that you don't really like. So, um, you know, they make sure they want to include us in every decision. Um, and then, you know, it wasn't really a vision. I just told guys, I mean, you know, we definitely have an opportunity to do something special here this year. And um, all you can ask for is a chance in this league. And we definitely have a chance to do something special. And, um, you know, a lot of guys actually was texting me, hey, man, you and LeBron, man, I, can I join? So it was pretty easy on, on, on my end. Um, but um, there there was guys that we had to try to, you know, convince that we really wanted here um, that end up, you know, being here. And now that we have, we feel like we have all the right pieces to um, – to do uh, what we want to do and reach our ultimate goal. Um, now it's about just going out, you know, buckling down and doing it. Anthony, obviously, I mean, you're going to be asked about this all year, but free agency next summer. Um, what have the Lakers done, done so far, do you feel like, to give you a sense of ownership in what's happening here? And then what has to happen um, this year, do you think, to make this a place you want to be long term? I just want to focus on this year. Um, you know, coming here, you know, the Lakers definitely opened me with welcome arm, well, open arms and um, made me feel like this is home, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, it's about what we can do this year. You know, we have a special team, a special unit, special coaching staff. Um, and, you know, we're going to do whatever we can to, to, you know, focus on this year and, and try to come out victorious. Now, Ali, big game, three-time defensive player of the year, eight-time all-star. Three-time, no eight-time. No three-time defensive player of the year. <laughs> Dwight Howard. Hi, Dwight. Dominant. Yes, yes. <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good. I'm happy to be here. 16 years in. We were just saying that while mm -hmm. AD was talking. 16 years in. What's the feeling for you this time around in Los Angeles? Oh, man, I'm just uh, happy to be here. Happy to be back in L.A. Um, <clears throat> just so, filled with so many emotions, but I'm yeah. just really happy uh, and thankful uh, to be playing for the Lakers. What, what do you want to be different this time around? What I want to be different? Yeah. I just, I just want to win. Yeah. That's the only thing that matters. Yeah. Are you at that point? 
I've career. always I mean, been, been at that, at that point, point, but uh, I just think uh, with the talent that we have, you know, we have an opportunity to do something special. Yeah. Uh, but we don't want to look too far ahead. We just want to make sure we stay in the moment. So today, the only thing that matters is right now being with you guys. Yeah. There's that <laughs> smile. He's like, I'm happy to be here, and I was waiting for the smile. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a beautiful smile. <laughs> well, a couple weeks ago, you were so kind enough to give us your time. You, you spent time with Geeter, mm -hmm. and, and one of the big things that came out of that is that you don't want to talk the talk. You, you want to be about it. How do you do that, Dwight, but not lose who you are? Because that personality is huge when it comes to the chemistry and locker room. Oh, yeah. And, and I just think guy. it's a balance. Mm -hmm. I think it's a balance, you know, being able to know when and where to do certain things. Mm -hmm. um, and for us to be successful, you know, I have to have balance, you know, uh, for myself. And uh, you just got to know when to have fun and when to be serious. And I think I've done a pretty good job of that, you know, uh, just learning when, you know. Coming in as a young player, it's hard to do that. But as you get older, you start to understand more. As you, as a young player, you, you know what you need to learn. As you, as you grow mm -hmm. older, I know sometimes I would always say, okay, I've, I've, I've learned enough. I just need to sustain it. What are you continuing to learn? This I try to learn career. something every day. Every day. Every day I try to learn something. There's no need to live if you're not learning. Oh. So, you know, I just try to learn something every single day that I'm alive, uh, whether it be on the court, whether it be about my teammates, about the organization. Just try to learn something that's going to help me improve myself but also improve this team. On the basketball court, what have you learned this summer? Oh, man, uh, just to pick and choose where I should be on the mm. court. Um, what my teammates really need me to do every single play and what I need to do for this team to be successful. And uh, that's been my only focus. You, you've spent years wanting to beat LeBron James. Yes. And now, you, now you're here playing with mm -hmm. LeBron James. What's that moment going to be like for you? Man, I'm Have just grateful. Have you envisioned grateful. it? I'm just grateful. You know, I've been seeing it all summer. You know, mm -hmm. even uh, right after I signed, you know, it's just, man, I'm playing with LeBron. You know, I never thought that it would happen. Uh, then playing with Rondo, playing with AD, playing with guys like Troy Daniels and Jared Dudley, you know, guys that nobody really talk about. But mm -hmm. I love watching those guys work and, and what they bring to the team. And I think we're going to have an amazing year. It's difficult to be in your shoes. You know, mm -hmm. everywhere you go, you're under the microscope. Whether you're injured or not, you're going to get critiqued by guys like me and people watching. Talk about your role now, though, because mm -hmm. you're not asked to be the guy. You're asked to be one of the guys. Talk about what that role is going to be like. Not, not as much pressure. No one's looking for you to go out and, you know, kill and dominate every night. How's that going to be for you? Well, I think they are looking for me to kill and dominate <laughs> every night. Okay, uh, but, I'm staying corrected. <laughs> but uh, the dominate and kill is just being the best teammate and the best Dwight Howard I can be. You know, uh, it's not trying to be LeBron, not trying to do LeBron's job, not trying to do AD's job, but do Dwight Howard's job every single night. And I think that that will give us an opportunity to win. You talked about the things that you've gone through personally, uh, mm -hmm. but when it comes to on the court, you also only played nine games last season. Yes. What gives you the confidence that you can be as dominant as this team will need of you and that you can be in yourself? Uh, well, you know, I had an unbelievable summer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as basketball players, you never get a chance to really uh, isolate yourself uh, to grow because you're playing in and out, you're traveling, you're doing so much. And having a back surgery, I was just forced to just sit down and be alone. And, you know, I really found out some great things about myself and, you know, what I need to, to do to become a, a better man, you know, a better father and stuff like that, and even a better basketball player. And I had a wonderful time doing that this summer. It was very hard at first, you know. I don't know if you guys have meditated before, but being alone and trying to meditate, you get the monkey brain, you're all <laughs> over the place. So I had to really learn how to center myself, and uh, that really helped me out. Dwight, just two seasons ago in Charlotte, Mm. Played 81 games, played Down. 30 minutes a night, 17 and 12. That's not that hey, long that, look, ago. The billboard worked. We He's got it back. <laughs> <laughs> the billboard worked. Welcome That's back. Good, thank thank you. you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. I knew it was going to work. <laughs> it did. It work sooner or later. Oh, glad to man. Be back. What, a way to, what a way to end that one right there. Lakers <laughs> Media Day. We'll be back in a few moments.